I was shown literally what happens to a person when they break bread with Jesus. But before I get to that, I want to tell you about a visitation I had in January from Jesus. And I had an open vision of Jesus stepping outside of his palace. And his palace is white with a flat roof. And he walks outside. I mean, this palace is huge. I kind of want to give you an idea of what I seen when I was taken up in spirit and like that. So what happens when you break bread with Jesus? And this is what he said as he walked outside of his palace. And he has, has these columns like this. And overlooking is like all of these fields of like vegetation. But it looked like this. The columns and the roof is flat like that, but it overlooks like all this green. And then he walks out, Jesus walks out, and he has a wood cutting board with bread on it. And then he sets it on his um, his table. He's got a picnic table. And then he cuts the bread in half, and then he holds up both pieces. Now, this was in January of this year, and said, break bread with me. And he had his coat on. So... When you break bread with Jesus, he resides within you, and you, and you drink of his blood. He resides within you. He literally comes inside of you. And when that happens, like John chapter 14, verses 10 through 12, like he states that he resides in the Father and the, the Father within him. So it's the same with you. So when you are water baptized... You have the Holy Ghost that resides in you. So when you do the breaking of bread, which when you break bread, you are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. And so when you do that and proclaim it, Jesus enters in you and resides with you in communion along with the Father. And I was shown what happens in the spiritual realm when this happens, because you have the Holy Ghost in you because of water baptism, so the Holy Ghost resides in you. And then when that happens, Jesus, when you break the bread, he resides in you. And when he resides in you, you reside in with him as he resides within the Father. So the Father also is there also. And this is like the most awesomest thing. So I am taken in spirit to like this restaurant it it was weird so i'm sitting i walk in the restaurant and i sit down with this girl who is just like there by herself and she just has a drink in front of her no food nothing but alcohol that was in front of her i the whole conversation was removed from me but she got up and left the table but i knew the conversation was about god so then i got up and um, God took me into another area. And so in this area, I'm like in a cafeteria. And in this cafeteria, I see a lot of African American men dancing all over the place. And I didn't understand it. And I'm looking at them and I know that something was wrong and totally off about it. So as I get up from the cafeteria table to go up to the counter an African an African man steps in front of me on purpose like all of a sudden I know that the whole room has their eyes on me and it's not a good thing so as he cuts me off to stop me from going to the counter I apologized to him when it was even his own fault and when I apologized to him it's like they more scattered. And as I'm looking around the room, it got real dark. Demons were everywhere. These people, their souls were demons. I realized that these people are no longer on this earth. And because of their way of um, not being water baptized, not having the Holy Ghost in them, and... Some of them were from churches 
and the, the whole church was not about God and they didn't have the Holy Ghost in them. This is the reason why they were they were in hell. And so as the realm is like getting more thicker with them and it is like scary, out of nowhere, Jesus literally steps forward from my heart because I have been going to Mass and I have been breaking bread every day, which is Holy Communion, eating of um, the bread and drinking of the wine, which is his body and his blood. Steps forward Jesus out of my being and he says the Lord's Prayer. And when he says the Lord's Prayer, I was like, oh my God, you know, like, but I knew that when he stepped forward, I was in the Father. So when Jesus said the Lord's Prayer, demons in the room disintegrated into air molecules. And then I knew I was residing in the Father, but something more scarier came, and it was the very demon that Jesus spoke about when he says, those kind, that kind came after me. Father and Jesus have been showing me for a year and a half about demons and um, what they do to you and how they do it to you. And if you don't have a water baptism and you don't have the Holy Ghost residing in you, a demon can reside in you. And when you do the breaking of bread, you are so much more protected with God to fend off these demons. And I'm going to get to this point why we need to do this every day now because we're in the end of days and the whole earth is a dwelling place of demons worse than any other time on the earth. We are being attacked and some of you don't even know it because you're not open like me. So when Jesus stepped forward out of me and he, Jesus, took me in the future too and said the Lord's Prayer in pockets, it is so powerful. That prayer the Father gave Jesus, and it is a very important prayer for the end of days, and you should be doing it three times a day. Even though a demon is not residing in you, you have the Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit in you, I'm telling you, they are roaming to and fro. And so when you say that three times a day, it, it disintegrates them. And those fallen angel ones, I, I don't know... It, I remember seeing its wing, and when Jesus stepped forward and said the Lord's Prayer, I seen the spiritual realm. It was like a huge tornado, and they were building up. And and when you don't reside in heaven, you're not a human being. You're a demon, and you will participate as a demon does and try to attack a human. They're not human no more. They're a demon. Let's get that straight. So when Jesus said the Lord's Prayer and the, and the realm was spinning around, it was like I was in a tornado of demonic. And Jesus and the Father allow this to happen so I can explain to you what happens when you break bread, when you say the Lord's Prayer, and when you do things according to God's will, how protected you really are. So they exploded, but the kind that Jesus talked about, those kind, I seen it out of the corner of my left, and it came in and it went to rip my neck apart because there, there's no um, food in hell except the flesh or what is left of your flesh. Because in heaven, you're never thirsty, you're, you're never hungry. There, you're hungry and you thirst. Now, if you kind of are getting it now from like the beginning of the dream, we're in a restaurant. That's man's restaurant with a girl. Didn't want nothing to do with hearing about God. Just gets up and leaves and doesn't have a clue how important it is to be water baptized, to have the Holy Ghost reside in you, because without it, you will not go to heaven. And people that are saying, do the sinner's prayer and just invite Jesus into your heart, this is how you properly invite Jesus into your heart, by the breaking of of the bread. The sinner's prayer is death. That's all it is, is a prayer. Even in the book of Acts, when they were there, those people believed in Jesus, but they didn't have the Holy Ghost residing in them. Even though the outpouring of God's Spirit in the book of Acts came upon them and they prophesied, 
and they spoke in tongues. Even the disciples said, Peter said, you must be baptized with water to receive the Holy Ghost now since you did that. So they all did and they were all blessed that day and the graces flowed. I mean, read the book of Acts. It was like a beautiful thing. 3,000 people that day were baptized. And this is after Jesus arose from the tomb. And he said, go out and baptize. This is how important it is. So the other most important part is, even in the book of Acts, after they were baptized with water and they spoke um, in tongues, they broke bread. And it is described all in the New Testament. And I'm telling you, I experienced the protection of God. Literally, Jesus stepped forward out of my being, said the Lord's Prayer, exploded demons by the Lord's Prayer. So the smaller ones, just they're, they're disintegrated, gone. Period. And so when I was experiencing that, and that demon, fallen angel one, and its wings were sharp. I mean, they... They take their prongs and, and they're going after you. And it came after me with its teeth. And I pushed back. And I knew I was in the Father. So, Jesus is in you. And you and Jesus are in the Father when you break bread. And I was told, and this is a warning to all of you, we're in the end of days. You must do this every day to be, to be protected. It protects protects you when you reside in God. Do you understand? They can't get to you. It tried to rip my jugular out. When I came out of where I was, I was like, oh my God. And he says, were you not protected by me? I'm like, yeah. He goes, it is scary. And it's going to be scary. Prior to all this, I was shown from the Euphrates River the four angels are released and I was shown how big they are and what they look like. If this is a dwelling place like it states in the book of Revelation for demons, you are going to need to be water baptized to receive the Holy Ghost. And when you receive the Holy Ghost, you should be breaking bread and drinking of his blood every day. For your own protection, you should be baptizing your family because you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And that is Jesus' own words. And there are people that believe that this sinner's prayer, oh, I accept you in, in my heart. No, the only way Jesus is coming in your heart is when you break bread. And the Holy Ghost will then reside in you. I explained about the book of Acts. I'm telling you, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And I was shown that part of hell. Of just a, It was a lot of demons, you guys. And they were so evil. And they were, they were men, a lot of African American men that are not told to do this because their whole congregations say, oh, it's just the faith prayer, the sinner's prayer, come in my heart. Whoever's doing that on Judgment Day, spreading that false gospel that you don't need to be water baptized, their judgment is going to be horrible. That's why there is a hell that is God's wrath for being disobedient. Can these people be forgiven by doing this? Yes, but if they have a channel, they should go and announce it publicly that these people need to be water baptized to receive the Holy Ghost. When you receive the Holy Ghost through water baptism, I'm telling you, you are sealed by God. And He will be there with you. But when you break bread, there's that extra protection. And I mean, I was well protected. But then after all of this, when that the other kind that Jesus talked about came after my neck. And I seen it's like sharp prongs of its wing. Michael the archangel came in and stated this. 
tell them to call on me for this very thing because Jesus said, you must do the Lord's Prayer for that kind and fast and resist. And I'm telling you, that thing is very evil. And now that those four are released from the Euphrates River, it's dried up, you guys. And Michael the Archangel Prayer, I will say this prayer to you and give you scripture for all of this. Okay. Here's the prayer to Archangel Michael because it was so cool when he came in. It was like, whew, because I'm like there, but the Father, we're res I'm residing in the Father's heart with Jesus as Jesus resides in the Father, and Jesus is in my heart, and he stepped forward and said the Lord's Prayer for me. So when you have Jesus residing in you and the Father residing in you, I'm telling you, automatically you start knowing things you you have like this intelligent your 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 spirit being is healed and every one of you that break bread that's what happens and it's awesome you're so protected but with that kind of demon that's the only prayer that's going to help you and to archangel michael this is what you say saint michael the archangel defend us in battle be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world seek seeking the ruin of souls. I'm telling you, People that aren't baptized and are not doing the things that it's so easy to do, the spiritual warfare, Jesus' way, I'm telling you, it states in the book of Revelation, those that do not have God's seal, they will be tormented for five months and want to seek death but they won't find it. And then when the three days of darkness come, all the people that are water baptized have the Holy Ghost in them and do communion. When the three days of darkness comes, you must do Holy Communion every single day. I was um, shown the three days of darkness and then St. Faustina came in the vision and she said, do the Divine Mercy Chaplet. That will protect you. So, this is why there is an importance on this channel to protect you in these end of days from what I've seen. These huge demons will be just like a human being and, um, like, thick, like, manifested. But they're a demon. And, I mean, some of them are half angel half animal I don't even know what they are and some of them used to be human beings and and it's they're they're terrifying I would be a liar if I didn't say to you when I was taken into that area of hell that I wasn't terrified because just one of them if I didn't have God's protection and I wasn't filled with God literally or Archangel Michael, who I call on every day. And every person that goes to Catholic Mass does this every day. When you split off from the Church of Jesus Christ and become other denominations, and you lose this very truth that is Scripture, I am told to tell you it, because a lot of you will not go to a Catholic Church. So, in these end of days, you will need to know that this is very important. If you have to redo the video and write it down, baptize your family members. Why wouldn't you baptize a baby? Where Where's everyone's common sense? I'm going to give you scripture for the breaking of bread. And there's more scripture. This is just some of them. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. Acts, read the whole book. 
Luke chapter 24 verses 30 through 35. I'll give you Acts chapter 2 verse 42. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 24 through 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 16. But with Corinthians, you should be reading 1st and 2nd Corinthians 2, both books. I'm telling you, like John chapter 14, 10 through 12, Jesus tries to tell everyone he and the Father are one, and he's in the Father and the Father in him. So when you break bread in, in, um, proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes, he will come and reside in you. Everyone says, well, Jesus don't love me. Jesus doesn't visit me. You want him to visit you? You want him literally to dwell in you with Father God? This will happen. And then when you do the Divine Mercy Chaplet, then you will receive another grace. You will receive the outpouring of his Spirit in you. Because it says in the end of days, his spirit will outpour on all flesh. Now the rays will come inside of you once you do the Divine Mercy Chaplet, which is more protection. So when the three days of darkness come, you don't have a problem. You won't have a problem any day in your life. If your whole family does this, which I'm telling you and warning you, you should do. Now those four fallen angels, when I seen them, the lust, and it's like a gray film, like which was on Satan. Like whenever I see like this dissipated gray, it's like a weird lust, even on the people that are being judged, that I say, oh, they have a dissipated gray on them. That is a lust um, of whatever it be. But they will become a lust demon when they go to hell. And that's, you don't, what's the opposite of love? Lust. But these demons... I would say they're about um, 250 feet tall, each one of them. And the gray dissipated lust coming off of them, it's just like, it's disgusting. I cannot describe it. The evil off of them is horrifying. If you don't do those very easy steps. If you, in the end of days, try to dip chains in Christ's blood or take Christ's blood and put it on any object or demon, I promise you, it doesn't come. His blood is to transform your soul into a glorified human being. He says, you will be like the angels. We get a new body. What do you think does that. He was a sacrifice on the cross. These people saying, say the sinner's prayer, invite Jesus into your heart. You are saved. No, you're not. You have to be water baptized. Then the Holy Ghost comes and resides in you. Then you break bread every day. Then Jesus literally will come and reside within you with the Father every single day. You'll never be without him. A lot of you wonder why you're so lonely. I, I'm i not lonely. I'm never lonely. The more I do this, the happier I am. I have more joy. Happiness is for a moment. Joy lasts. So, I was told to tell you, those fallen angels that were bound in chains by Archangel Michael and the angels, which... Jesus gives the authority to the angels to bind demons. The binding and loosening through these false um, teachers doing their false spiritual warfare. I'm going to tell you what. It doesn't work. It's not happening. You could say it all you want. There's nothing being bound or binded at all. The binding and loosening were laws for, for Peter that he received the keys from Jesus permission to actually remove um, people in the church that are corrupting 
the people that are doing God's will and lying, like the false teachers and the false prophets, those type of people are being removed from the church. That's what that binding and loosening was, to remove false teachers and liars from the church that were corrupting the church. I encourage you to read about the seven churches in the book of Revelation. And that's all the binding and loosening is. Now, if you're watching um, Isaiah Salvador and he calls himself a demon slayer, I guarantee you this is all you need to do. And I, I told you in the last video of um, my visitation by Father God where he took me and put me in front of a person that was not baptized. I did not know this. But then I said, I cast you out, and the demon just poof, came out. And if there was demons anywhere in the atmosphere, they were gone too. I cast you out in Jesus' name. That's all you say. That's all you say. And they came out, and then Father God said, those demons will come back because they're not baptized by water, and they don't have the Holy Ghost residing in them. And now this is the importance of the Lord's Prayer. Now, they will say their own prayer. How arrogant, how lost are they? The Catholic Church is the only church that does spiritual warfare properly. There, there's hardly anyone in the... I, 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 it's a rarity that anyone was possessed in the Catholic Church because they're all baptized. They all have the Holy Ghost residing in them. They all do Holy Communion, but you're to do it every day. The disciples did it every day. Go through the whole Bible in the New Testament. They broke bread. That's what it means. And I have the open visitation from Jesus. And now I have these visitations where, hey, since I started doing it every day, Jesus literally comes. He never leaves you or forsakes you. It's you that choose not to have him. If you don't do this, that's on you. I want him every day with me, along with the Father. Even though the Holy Ghost resides in me, I want them here with me every day. My life is so much better and so much funner. But the false teachers, the Vicky Purnells, the Isaiah Salvadors, the Amanda Grace, um, the Robin Bullocks, are you kidding me? And you are to call upon angels. And everyone that, that will sit there, you're not to call on an angel. I could tell that you never read scripture. Or you're following, following false teachers your whole life and just went by hearsay and never opened up the Bible. Why do you think God has angels? It states in the Bible to protect you. I give my angels charge over you. And for Archangel Michael to come in and say that, it's of importance because those four angels where the Euphrates River is bound, they're, they're frightening. They're, it's terrifying. If you don't have your repentance of sin, stop sinning, and ask for forgiveness and do everything that I just explained, and even in the last video... I encourage everyone to go over this channel and learn how to do spiritual warfare properly. It shouldn't take a half hour to cast a demon out at all. All you say is, I cast you out in Jesus' name. And it's gone. If you have the Holy Ghost residing in you from water baptism, you don't have a demon. And if you're hearing things on the outside, you're being taunted by them. A lot of people, and I'm warning you, and I warned you a long time ago, that since the earth is a dwelling place, especially Mystery Babylon, which is America, is a dwelling place of demons, that means they live here. That means if your neighbor is sinning, they're, they're, I'm telling you, it's like an infestation. It's not like how it used to be. Every abortion, a demon comes up out of hell. We have giant Ouija boards that are in Europe, and uh, the largest one has just broke the world's record here in the United States. 
We have a government now, I don't know if you guys knew this, that um, one of our state buildings, um, one of our military went in there and took out the Baphomet that was in there. They're decorating our um, country with demons. We are in the end of days. So you should be happy that I got to experience this for you because it felt that good to be protected, but this demon that Jesus talked about, it was terrifying and it's and it's huge and it has these sharp prongs and it's and it's demon wings. And I and then I, after Archangel Michael said, you tell them, pray to me daily. An archangel visit isn't for his health, it's for your benefit. Because they will taunt you so much that you'll end up saying bad things against God. And you won't understand, where, what, why won't God make it go away? Did you stop sinning? Did you forgive everyone in your life that angered you or made you bitter? I don't care what it's for. I was highly abused as a child. And I'm going to tell you what. What I went through and I forgave him, it was like the weight went off me. And people say, oh, my problems were so bad. If I went over my life with you, you would be in shock that I forgave someone like that. I first studied Jesus. Um, he was the only one I could uh, kind of wrap my mind um, around it, that he went through what I went through with his um, when he was whipped, the way he was whipped. And then I later on in life had to watch um, like World War III um, to look at what the Jewish people went through so that it, it would tell me that I didn't really have it that bad. And that's all I'm going to say about it. But say your prayer to Archangel Michael. Break bread with God every day. You must repent of your sins. And you must forgive people in your life that has hurt you because that that will have the attacks of the demons because we're to do everything that Jesus did. And you say, oh, I can't forgive that person. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Jesus took on everyone's sin and didn't complain when he went to the cross. Took on all that. Do you, do you think that God would sit there? Well, I did this for you. I didn't deserve it. No, he forgave all of them. He even yelled out, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. And you are to be the same as him. So I'm getting this message out. It was the most awesomest experience. It was amazing. I had such joy today. Um, but, I mean, knowing all this stuff that is coming and seeing those fallen angels that are now not in the Euphrates, bound in the rocks down in there. They're out now. And I told you that Satan was cast down. I told you, Michael the Archangel told me that, um, what, five months ago? And trust me, he's to and fro. And as you can look at people and their attitudes, they, with their mind, attach themselves to your mind. Have you ever wondered why? Wow, I was in a great mood and I don't know why I was so snappy. That's them attaching bad thoughts to your mind. When you break bread and you're water baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and not sinning and doing God's will, you shouldn't have a problem even with having a bad day. So I'm getting this out. It was the most awesome experience that Jesus stepped forward like out of me. It, it was cool. And then he said the Lord's Prayer. His voice is so beautiful. And then when I seen those demons, I was like, it, it, it's terrifying. And I, I pushed back. I was like, oh my God. And I was in the Father as Jesus went back in me. And then Archangel stepped in and said that. So, I'm getting this out. It's very important. So, you can experience that tonight. If you say, hey, I forgive me for all my sins, confess them, break bread with him, and, and drink wine of his blood, Holy Communion, every day, 
Jesus will be literally there with the Father because the Holy Ghost already resides in you from water baptism, the Great Comforter. I hope this explains everything a lot more and I think it's awesome. Now you know why in the other video I said I had to do it separate. Okay. God bless you.